Next, we're going to turn to looking at a couple of antidepressants and also to opioid antagonists for methamphetamine and amphetamine use disorder. So mirtazapine is an antidepressant that primarily works increasing both the effects of serotonin and norepinephrine, and it probably has indirect effects on increasing dopamine slightly in the brain reward pathway. So that's the rationale for using mirtazapine to treat methamphetamine use disorder because it may mildly mimic some of the effects of methamphetamine while not being euphorogenic. So we're presenting here a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Now, this was primarily men and transgender women who have sex with men, so it was not a highly generalizable sample. And the mirtazapine dose was 30 milligrams per day for 24 weeks. The adherence to this oral medication was quite poor, but despite poor adherence, you'll also see that it did demonstrate some potential benefits. And what we are looking at on the y-axis is the percent of patients who had positive test results for methamphetamine. So once again, looking at urine testing results. And the orange line represents mirtazapine, the black line placebo. And although for the first several weeks they track very closely, you can see that about week nine, there appears to be some reduction in methamphetamine use with the mirtazapine group. And that was a statistically significant effect at week 12. So more needs to be explored with this medication, but it is one that has potential and can be very easily and safely prescribed off-label if nothing else is working. Bupropion is another commonly used antidepressant. Bupropion has an FDA indication for tobacco cessation. And the mechanism of action, we believe, that it mimics the effects of stimulant drugs in that it very slightly blocks reuptake of norepinephrine and dopamine, but not nearly to the extent that the stimulants do. And these are data from a larger study where bupropion was found not to be effective, but when they separated the sample out and they looked at the people who had lower levels of methamphetamine use, they did see a signal there so we are looking at the percentage of patients with methamphetamine free day per week, and the blue symbols represent those treated with bupropion, the red symbols represent placebo, and you can see over time the patients on bupropion who had low levels of methamphetamine use were increasing their numbers of days not using. So there's something there worth exploring. Now we're going to turn to the opioid antagonists. So naltrexone is a mu opioid antagonist. When naltrexone's in the system, it sits on the mu opioid receptor and it blocks the effects of exogenous and some endogenous opioids that are involved in brain reward systems. And so in this study of amphetamine use disorder done in Scandinavia, they compared oral naltrexone, which is typically dosed at 50 milligrams per day to a double-blind placebo, and the active treatment group with oral naltrexone gave more negative urine specimens over time than the placebo group. Again, not even getting over 50%, but beating placebo. So that created the idea of if bupropion works a little bit and naltrexone works a little bit, maybe by combining them and they have different mechanisms of action, we can get even more benefit. In this particular study, they gave naltrexone in a long-acting injection every three weeks to make sure that naltrexone levels in the bloodstream stayed up. And they also combined that in the active treatment group with bupropion, sustained release 450 milligrams per day. Somewhat complex study that's depicted here. So there were two phases to the study with an adaptive design. In phase one, which was six weeks, the patients were randomly assigned to the combination of naltrexone and bupropion or to placebo forms of both of those medications. And so what we're looking at is the percentage of negative methamphetamine urine samples. And although the active treatment group is really only getting up to 25% negative, still doing much better than placebo, where they hardly gave any 
negative specimens. After that first part of the study, all the people who got placebo in that first part and did not respond to placebo, the non-placebo responders were re-randomized either to the active combination or back to placebo. So the point is to eliminate placebo responders. And you can see, once again, the combination medication does better at producing negative urine specimens compared to the placebo, although it wasn't as dramatic as it was in the first part of the study, which makes sense because by enrolling only placebo non-responders, you're essentially enrolling people who have even no placebo effect. So this looks like a promising combination, it was recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and will need some follow-up, but is certainly something that could be used in clinical practice if using the medications off-label even now. So the antidepressants, mirtazapine and bupropion, show some signal for efficacy for the treatment of methamphetamine use disorder in selected populations. The opioid antagonist naltrexone also shows a signal in some studies, but not others. The combination of naltrexone and bupropion looks quite promising based on a sizable, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial, the results of which were recently published.